This week on CWN is the last show ending the 2021-2022 school year. And our seniors have graduated. I'm Brooke. And I'm Aaron. And today is Saturday, May 21st, 2022. You are watching Cal and Wildcat News Weekly Review. I don't know about you, Aaron, but I'm really going to miss the seniors this year. I am too. They've been the face of CTV for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like it's, while there are going to be new faces coming into the news, it's really not going to be the same without them. That is very true. Mm -hmm. Let's kick off our show. Here at Calhoun High School, it's been business as usual as we still have a lot to cover. With the exception of final semester exams, all other testing is done. Let's send it over to Mrs. Elmore, who has something to say to the AP testers. Hi, my name is Mia. I'm here with Miss Elmore, and we're here to talk about how well the AP testing went. So, do, is there anything you have to say? I do. I want to say congratulations to all the AP teachers and all the AP students. I know all of you have worked so hard all year long, and finally, finally, AP testing is done. Some of you took four, five exams. You've worked hard. You came in extra time, and I just wanted to give you one last celebratory hoorah! <laughs> Well, you heard it from me. Congratulations to all the AP testing. That's all for me. Now back to the studio. Ms. Compton's engineering class is currently making their automatas more automated. Let's see what her class did. Okay, so today the students took their automatas and they made them automatic. We talked about friction. We added a belt and pulley system. We're going to talk about resistance later on and how to slow down the motion. And they've made them greater. Autumn caught up with Miss Cash about frog dissections. Let's check it out. Hey, it's Autumn here with Callan TV, and I'm here with Miss Cash. Miss Cash, so your students are doing a frog dissection. How do you think they're going to be doing? Um, I think they're going to do great. You know, the star test is over, so everybody's more relaxed. This is more hands-on, and they literally get to dig in. And this, why is this your favorite part? Um, because they um, have more time to explore, there's not the pressure of the test, um, and they're, they're actually using the hands-on instead of just listening to me talk, so they're probably le learning more, actually. <laughs> That's good. Now, thank you. And now back to the studio. It is a blessing that that lab is over because the smells in those hallways were otherworldly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, when I was a freshman, we had quarantine and COVID, so we didn't get to do that. So oh, yeah. thankful. I had to experience it, and I never want to smell that smell again. <laughs> now, Dr. Hodge Tis Florence at last conducted a crime in a box project. Let's take it to her for more. I'm here with Dr. Hodgkiss. So Dr. Hodgkiss, can you tell us why you chose this lab and how it will benefit your students in the future? Um, yeah, we are going over everything we've covered in class. So every single unit, every single chapter, they are making a crime scene. They are going down into detail of evidence, of how things are planned out, time frame, autopsy report, um, different kinds of class or individual evidence. And it's just really in intriguing to see how creative they're coming up with these crime scene boxes. All right, well, thank you. Hi, I'm Emma, and I'm here with Sarah, who is doing a crime in a box lab in her forensics class. So Sarah, can you tell us more about this? So we have to build a small crime scene in a box, so we have to create our own story and stuff like that, like figure out the plot and the suspects, figure out the evidence and stuff like that. And then we have to put a shoebox together and put little figurines and then basically make just a little mini crime scene. And then we have to fill out an autopsy report, do a presentation, write the storyline so the people in the class can put together who did the murder and stuff like that. All right, that sounds like a lot of fun. And thank you. And that's all from us. Now back to the studio. Band had their last concert of the year, otherwise known as the Band Appaloosa. Let's take it to Mr. Goodman for more information on the concert. Hey everyone, I'm Trinity and I'm here with Mr. Goodman. So I heard that last night y'all had a final band concert. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right. We had our last band concert concert of the year. We're calling it Band the Palooza. And in it, we're having all the bands from the sixth grade band, the seventh and eighth grade competing bands, all the way through the two high school bands perform in the concert last night. And why showcase from all the way to sixth grade, all the way to the high school? Well, it's really cool. We like to have a lot of community pride. We ended with the grand finale of everybody in the band program playing the school song together to kind of conclude the concert. And we also want to get the sixth graders and the parents a taste of what's in store for them once they, you know, advance to the seventh and eighth grade. And then obviously advance into the state finalist marching and concert band program if you're at Cal Allen. 
That's great. And a lot of the students sounded amazing. You, they all did such an amazing job with the, teaching them and getting them ready for this performance. Here with Haley. So what instrument did you play last night at the concert? Um, I played the clarinet. That's great. And what did you think of it as it being your final performance? I thought it was sad that I won't be able to perform again next year, but there's always next year. And it was a great experience being with all the beginners and seeing how they're going to be when they're in high school and help our legacy continue. That's great. And I'm sure it was a lot of fun being there and performing with everyone else. And now that's all for me. Now back to the studio. East Elementary had their field day last week and some of our students went to help out. Here's Aaron with a report. Good morning, Kyle and Wildcats. We're here at East Elementary for their field day. I'm here with Ms. Sabellis and Mrs. Dietrich. Mrs. Dietrich, when's the last time we had high schoolers at the East Elementary field day? It was, it was 2018 and we brought about 47 of them and I didn't come. They just said they needed high school kids and, you know, Kyle Allen kids are going to step up and go help uh, and, you know, get out of school. But yeah, they're going to come and help over here. So this is real exciting. This is my first time to watch what's happening. And this is phenomenal. This is truly amazing. So, to the left of me, we have one of your former students. How exciting is it to see them become a teacher? It, it was really exciting. Now, I had Natalie, who was one of my cheerleaders at Gregory Portland. She was in my class. She was my office aide. Um, and she was talented and gifted then with kids. And I know she's talented and gifted here. So, it's really exciting that we're, we're, we're teaching in the same school district. She, she's one of my favorite, all-time favorite people. That's it, awesome. How exciting is it to, you know, start be teaching? How long have you been teaching? 17 years. Ooh, that's been a minute. Have you been at Cal Island that entire time? I haven't. This is my eighth year in Cal Island. So eight years in Cal Island, and then I've been to a few other districts. Do you have a lot of fun at these field days normally? I do. I love it. I love competing against the kids. Uh, they have a blast together, running around, trying everything new and I like I like challenging them trying to beat them <laughs> well good luck in those challenge today and thank you both so much for your time we'd like to give a special doubt to all of our teachers and parents who made this possible they've done so much we see so many teachers and parents here just giving up their Fridays to help with this little field day they have thank you so much for your um, efforts and that's all from here let's send it back to the studio so how was East Elementary field day? It was super fun. All the kids had a lot of fun. I was walking around with the camera, and other times I was helping with this little bowling station. Mm -hmm. I know Jace Hofstetter and I had a little competition with the kids. <laughs> we ended up tying, so in our books, we were both winners. <laughs> That's wonderful. Coach Hernster is doing a Lord of the Rings marathon over the summer. He has more information for us on that. Let's check it out. Hey, if you were in AP language last year or this year, uh, you were one of my students. Uh, you're invited to the second annual Lord of the Rings Marathon. Uh, this year we're holding it in the Cal Island FEMA Dome. Uh, the date is on Friday, June the 3rd, and we start at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll provide some pizza and some drinks, uh, bring some snacks, and bring a comfy chair. I hope to see you there. The English 4 classes were working on the senior memory books. Trinity interviewed Coach Gonzalez for more. Let's see what this project was about. Hey everyone, I'm Trinity and I'm here with Mr. Gonzalez. So we heard the seniors are doing some kind of project. Can you tell me what that project is? Yes, we're doing a senior memory book. Uh, they have 18 chapters to write on and a lot of them has to consist of uh, things they've done throughout their school life uh, from, from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. Uh, the people that have helped them and, and how things, you know, things they remember and things they, they uh, will stick with them for the rest of their lives. And now I'm here with Eliza. So are you, how do you feel about this uh, book that y'all are working on? Honestly, I, it, it's making me feel very sentimental because the questions asked brought up like memories that I completely have forgotten about and were like in the back of my brain. So I am feeling very nostalgic about it. I'm sure y'all have gone through so much during the years and is there, are you gonna miss uh, Cal Allen and everyone here? <laughs> I, I'm surely gonna miss coming here every day. It's been literally all I've done, um, but I'm very excited to move forward with my life. 
That's great. And we wish you luck and all the other seniors luck when y'all leave and hope y'all have great time. For me, now back to the studio. Last week, the seniors had their traditional dress-up day. This tradition has gone on for many decades. Mia spoke to some seniors dressed up. Let's check it out. Hey, it's Mia with Cal on TV, and I'm here with the Magic School Bus crew. So how long did it take to put this together? Um, it was actually kind of last minute because we were all trying to think of like different things to do. And then um, Laramie actually was the one who... Um, was like, hey, let's do the Magic School bus, I don't know, probably like a week and a half ago. And then we just all went shopping together and got outfits and everything like that. What gave you this inspiration? Um, you know, ever since like our childhood, you know, everyone knows the Magic School bus and everything like that. And it's just like a really cute thing to uh, like remember of our like childhood and stuff like that. So we thought like, let's just do our senior year. And I see that you have the bus. So how long did it take to make this bus? Um, it took a couple of days because I had to paint it and then the wheels took forever. But in the end, I finished it this morning, so it worked out, though. Hey, it's me, and I'm here with a couple other seniors that dressed up. So what gave you this inspiration to dress up? Uh, we kind of just woke up one morning and thought it would be a spontaneous and fun idea to be able to play tag throughout the school. And we figured out that if we have bananas being chased by gorillas and then the gorillas have to be detained by the zookeeper, that it would be pretty entertaining for the rest of the school. And I hear you huffing and puffing under there, so how hot is it under there? Me. 130 degrees. Hey, it's Mia. I'm here with a couple of Power Ranger girls. So um, what's your favorite part about the outfit? Um, probably our swords because we can go around and like hit people and, <laughs> and like play fight in the hallway. And how long have you been planning this? Um, we've actually wanted to do this since, since our freshman year. So we're really glad that we got a senior dress up day. And I know being seniors, this is your last Friday. How are you feeling about it? It's all coming, like, it's all becoming way more real. We're all finally, like, coming to terms with the fact that we're literally about to graduate. So we've been just soaking up every single moment that we're spending together and, like, making the most of what time we have left. Well, you heard it from me. Good luck to all the seniors after graduation. That's all from me. Now back to the studio. You know, for sure, I would say that Riley Hooper's group, being Miss Frizz and the Magic School Bus, was my favorite senior dress-up this year. It was so adorable. They all had their little costumes, and Riley had her little Magic School Bus, and it was absolutely adorable. I also loved um, Hobbs and his Elvis Presley. That was so well done. It really matches his personality. It really does. It is time for the GP student report. As GPISD is wrapping up their year, this video is a little more about GPTV and what they have worked on and produced throughout this school year. Let's check it out. Hi, I'm Ella Spencer. The school year is coming to an end, so here's everything GPTV has done this year. That's all the Wildcat news for this week. If you liked what you saw, check out these two QR codes or go to gptvvideos.com. Thanks for watching. My work here is done, guys. Goodbye. I don't know about you, Aaron, but that, that was amazing. That was. It was like so much cool equipment and just to mm -hmm. see all the stuff they did throughout the year. Yeah, I hope we can get there one day. 
Now, Ms. John's chemistry classes conducted a lab over titrations earlier in the week. Let's take it to Cooper, who caught up with myself, Abby, and Ms. John's. Hi, I'm here with Ms. John's, Brooke, and Abby, and they did a titration lab today. So, well, why'd you do the lab? Well, we are now doing our second round of reactions. The first time we just learned how to, like, write equations and balance them and write formulas and then we learned a whole lot of more chemistry all the math part and now we're back to learning what reactions actually are and so one of the ones we are learning is about an acid base where you make a neutralization reaction and so we titrated an unknown uh, volume I mean we know the volume of the acid we didn't know the concentration and we titrated it with a known um, concentration of base to make water and it turned pink when it does that so it's kind of cool and they are able now to go back and do all the math that we've learned and figure out what the concentration was of that unknown acid it's just a good way for them to actually uh, talk about titrations we did the math over titrations today was the actual time that they actually saw what we were doing yeah. so Brooke and Abby uh, was it nice to see what you wanted in class in person I mean what did y'all learn um, it was really interesting to see the actual like neutralization process when we're just doing the math. You don't really visualize um, like how the bases and the acids together can like react with each other. And I really enjoyed seeing it like change colors. That's what's good about science, all right? Yeah. Thank you all. all right. That's all from here. Back to the studio. The library and auditorium will be undergoing renovations. We spoke to Mrs. Lyons and Miss Liao for more insight on what all we will be occurring. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Joshua Perkins from Cal on TV, and I'm here with Miss Liao from Theater. So can you tell me about the renovations in the auditorium? Oh, yes. We have some exciting updates coming up to our auditorium. We are going to be installing a brand new uh, screen that will drop from above the stage. We have a smaller one, but this one is a lot bigger. And then beforehand, we were having to roll out our projector in order to show something on that screen. But then they'll be installing us a brand new projector above our light booth. So we'll be able to run that from the booth, which is going to be so much more convenient. So the huge screen and the new projector is one of the big renovations we're having this summer. We are also doing uh, new, getting a new sound system. So they are gonna be updating our entire sound board and sound system, what we play things on. We will also be getting microphones above our stage and have more accessibility with our hand mics and our lapel mics. Hi, it's Maddie with Cal on TV and I'm here with Miss Lines. So I know the library is closed. Can you tell me about a little bit about the renovations and the stuff that's going to be going on during like the summer? Sure. We have a lot of new um, things coming. We have all new furniture. Um, a new screen, new five new flat panel TVs that are going to be out um, around the library. Things are going to look really different. New paint, new lights. Okay, well that sounds really good. Now that's all from us. Now back to the studio. Now let's take it to Maddie with a rundown on sports. Thank you, folks. Some of our spring sports continue to do an amazing job. Baseball and softball are, are still rocking it in the playoffs. The Callan baseball team is taking on a longtime rival, Robstown, in what is sure to be a heated series. The Wildcats won both games over the Cotton Pickers during district play by a margin of one run in each game. The Wildcats had a solid performance in the last round and hope to continue their success in the series. They played on Thursday, Friday, and today. If needed, tune into Chris Six Sports for all the scores and highlights. The softball team has been playing with their high level of intensity as they have been all season long. After dismantling Pearl Saw in a two-game sweep, they advanced to round four to take on Columbia. Hey, it's me and I'm here with Coach Lentz and they have a game today against West Columbia. Columbia, so how do you think it's going to go? Um, well, we played them Wednesday night, and um, it was a it was a really good game. Ended up um, beating them two to one. Uh, I think uh, today it'll be tough, but you know the girls just come out and play like we know how, and um, you know things will go good. Okay. And do you think the seniors are going to be affected now that they're graduating? And do you think they're going to have an emotional toll on them? Um, no, I think this is what they want. This is you know, kind of always the goal to be playing after graduation. So I think this is something that they're going to, you know, embrace and, and, you know, kind of live in the moment and do their thing and, and uh, do anything and everything they can do to, to try to get it done for their team. And I know the senior class is, like, amazing, and they're going to leave a legacy along with Brianna Ford coming in with 15 Ks and um, Reagan coming in with that last two bombs the last game. Um, how do you feel about them leaving? Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about our senior class and and even Kayla Kayla had a had a triple um, yesterday too I mean just their presence their mindset their focus is is you know what more can a coach ask for um, so uh, again I, I think they're gonna do everything they can to, to be whatever they need to be for the team and and um, you know they've worked their their tails off for for this opportunity and again we're playing after graduation that's that's a that's always a, a 
a great thing, a blessing, and um, I think they'll be excited. It's definitely sad to see all seniors go. Now that's all for me. Now back to the studio. And I just want to say good luck to all our um, sports teams, and that's the latest on Cal on Sports. Now back to the anchors. Thank you, Maddie. Now it's great to see our Diamond Sports continue with their success. I know it is. They both have a really, really good chance to stay and wishing the best of luck to both of them. They do. Good luck to y'all. Now here's Evan with today's weather forecast. Hello, Wildcats. And today's weather forecast is brought to you by Sonic, Mary's favorite driving. Currently, right now, it is on the 95 with a low chance of rain with winds up to 20 miles per hour from the southeast. Around noon, weather will rise to about the high 90s, possibly over the hundreds, so watch out for that. Um, with pretty much no chance of rain with winds up to 19 miles per hour from the south and southeast. This afternoon, weather will probably hopefully drop to about 96 with still low chance of rain with winds up to 22 miles per hour from the south and southeast. And tonight, weather will, also, will continue to drop to low 80s with a low chance of rain with winds up to 18 miles per hour from the south southeast. Back to the acres. Thank you, Evan. And guys, we are entering our last week of school here at Tal Allen High School. I am so excited for summer. Like, I can't even tell y'all. Me too. <laughs> And that's all your announcements for today and this school year, but now it's time for your joke of the day. So guys, what's the difference between ignorance and apathy? I don't know, Aaron, what? I don't know, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> Thank you. For all you social people out there, make sure you're following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Talent TV, for all the latest updates. Also, subscribe to us on YouTube to catch all of our latest videos. And as always, stay, stay classy, Talent.